Hey guys, today we're going to look at some tools and materials that you can use to make costumes. There are so many different ways that you can make costumes, so the materials that you'll see here are not a complete list of all the materials that you can use. There are some other ones out there, but the ones that I'm going to show you are the most common and probably the easiest ones to work with if you're new to costume making. I will say that cosplay almost requires creativity, so don't go into this video thinking that these are the only tools and materials that you can possibly use to make a costume. This is just the stuff that I use personally, but since it's so easy to work with, I'm probably going to keep using it. So the first thing that I wanted to cover was the glue that I used. The one that I'm holding is contact cement. This is probably the best type of glue that you can buy if you're working with foam costumes. Basically how it works is that you paint it on to two pieces that you want to glue together and then you let those pieces dry for a few minutes and then when the glue is dry it's really sticky and then you just stick the two pieces together and press it together really hard and it will basically be stuck together forever. EVA foam is very dense and it's hard to rip, but even it will tear before contact cement does. One thing to keep in mind about contact cement is that it does give off bad fumes, so you'll want to wear a mask whenever you use it. Next up on the list of glues is the hot glue gun, and as you can tell, mine has been through a lot. If you are new to costume making, this is what I recommend you start out with first, as it is not toxic and is still very strong. The only downside is that if you get it on your skin, it will hurt quite a bit, but on the plus side, all you need to do to get more of it is just buy replacement hot glue sticks, and you can just reuse the gun. The real downside to using it is because it leaves bad seam lines. For instance, if you're trying to put two pieces of foam together and you don't want any sort of line or crack between them, don't use hot glue. Use contact cement. It will close the gap much better than hot glue. But if you can't get contact cement, then hot glue is your best bet. Moving on to the last bit of glue that I recommend, and we have super glue. There are many different types of super glue out there. This is just the one that I found to be pretty useful. This is a great type of glue for small pieces, like detail pieces that you want to glue on top of another piece. I really don't recommend this for big pieces that you want to glue together. But otherwise, I would definitely recommend getting a small bottle of this just to keep for detail pieces. One other type of glue that you might be familiar with is stick glue, and all I can say is do not use it. It will not hold anything stronger than paper, and it barely even holds that. You can use it in Pepakura builds, but not for foam builds. Next up, we need to talk about knives. You're going to need something sharp to cut the foam later on. A smaller knife would work better, like the ones that I have here. No, you cannot use a sword. There are several different types of knives that you can use to cut with. These are just two of the ones that I found to be pretty useful. We have a small X-Acto knife and a larger box cutter knife. The box cutter is what I would use to cut larger pieces of foam or thicker foam. And the smaller X-Acto knife is what I would use to do detail pieces or thin foams. Either way, just make sure your knife is sharp and don't cut yourself. The next thing that you're going to need is a ruler. I recommend getting several different kinds. As you can see, I have a longer wooden one and a smaller metal one. The metal ruler is great for guiding the knife, but the wooden one is great for drawing straight lines. You have to be kind of careful with the wooden ruler. When you're using a knife around it, it can actually cut into the wood and start shaving it off, which is why you need a metal ruler, which is probably my favorite. And you honestly don't have to have a ruler specifically, you can use pretty much anything that's straight and will give you just something to rest your knife on as you cut through the foam. The next useful tool that I will talk about is a Dremel tool. This is extremely useful for beveling edges. It's basically just a piece of sandpaper that spins around really quickly and it will sand down the foam very easily. You can also change out the bit on the end for this little disc, which will make it easy to cut through thicker things like plastic. I don't recommend using just plain sandpaper on foam because it will make it kind of fuzzy, but a Dremel tool moves fast enough so that it doesn't mess up the foam. 
Another tool that you might be interested in is this wood burner. It's basically just a knife that you plug into the wall and it gets really hot and it's able to cut through the foam really easily. The only problem is that it can burn through the foam sometimes. So you have to be really careful about keeping your wood burner straight, but otherwise it's a great tool that you might want to consider. I would not suggest using the wood burner as an actual knife, just use it to make engravements in your foam. The next tool that I recommend getting, and I highly recommend getting this one, is a heat gun. It may look like a hair dryer, but it is much more powerful, and you can use it to heat up the foam to the point where the foam is bendable and malleable, and you can actually create 3D curved shapes with the foam. So if you want any sort of bubble effect on your costumes, then you're definitely going to need a heat gun. Another tool that you may find helpful is sandpaper. Now I highly recommend that you don't use this on just foam by itself because it can really scratch up the foam and make it fuzzy as I said before, but if you're going to work with any sort of resin or liquid plastic then you're going to need some sandpaper to smooth it out. Also if you ever use spackling then you can sand that down as well to cover up seam lines. So here's another kind of ruler that you might want to pick up. It's called a measuring tape. I'm sure you've heard of them, but it's essentially just a flexible ruler and it is very good because you can wrap it around your body and get an accurate measurement of your size so you can make costumes based off your body specifically, but it is not mandatory, I would say. One other tool that you might want to pick up is masking tape. This type of tape is mostly used for painting, so it will come into play later, but it's great if you want to paint only a certain section of your armor, or if you want to paint on stripes or something like that. Now you're probably going to want a Sharpie as well. I use it all the time to transfer templates over to foam. They do tend to die pretty quickly when you use them on foam. I guess just the material isn't very good for the Sharpie tip, so you may want to buy like a pack of them just to make sure you have extra, but a Sharpie is the primary tool that you will use to draw the templates on the foam. These next two tools that we'll look at are for sealing your foam, and this is a pretty important step that you'll want to do before painting. The first foam sealer is called Mod Podge. These two are just different kinds, but they do exactly the same thing. It doesn't really matter which one you get. The important thing to note about Mod Podge is that you brush it on, meaning you have to take a paintbrush and actually brush it on the foam, which can leave brush marks. This is a very similar substance to white glue, except it's not sticky, and once it dries on the foam, it will harden a little and allow you a more smooth surface to paint on. It'll also prevent the foam from soaking up any watery paint, which will prevent any weird textures that you don't want. Another type of sealant that you can use is a spray-on kind. Here I have Rust-Oleum brand, but there's also one called Plasti-Dip that I will show later. Basically, it just acts like spray paint, except it's a rubber coating that you can paint over top of. You can't sand this material down, which is something that you might want to keep in mind. It's not exactly the same as primer, but it's very similar. One difference between the spray-on kind of sealer versus the brush-on kind that we saw earlier is that the brush on kind is meant to be painted over top of, whereas the spray on kind can actually act as paint on its own. So now we can look at some safety tools. First up, we'll look at some different masks. The mask with filters on it is used for painting or working with harsher chemicals like the contact cement. And the smaller white mask is just a dust mask. It's only used for like sanding. They sell different filters for the painting mask and each filter has a different purpose. Like one is for harsh chemicals and another is for paint. But the manual is very technical and very difficult to read and it's hard to tell if your filter is going to stop a certain chemical that you're working with. I use the one called Organic Vapors when I'm using contact cement, but I am honestly not sure if that's the right thing to do, so don't just take my word for it. You may want to do some research on this on your own. One thing I would like to point out is that if you're using contact cement outside, then the air is going to blow the harsh chemicals away pretty quickly, so you probably won't even need a mask if you're outside. But again, Again, you may want to look into this some yourself. 
Another safety item that I recommend you picking up is some gloves. These are the disposable kind. I would recommend getting a large pack of them because you will find out pretty quickly how dirty your gloves will get just covered in glue and other materials. It is extremely nice when working with things like super glue so you don't end up gluing your hands together. So I definitely recommend getting some of these. They're not that expensive either. Another optional tool that I would recommend getting is a dummy head. This is great for measuring a head size for helmet making, and it can even be used as like a display if you want to display your helmets on their own, but this is totally optional, and your head will probably be a different size than this head anyway, so it's up to you. So that's all for the tools, now I wanted to look at some of the materials that I use to make costumes. First up is just a simple one, this is a PVC pipe. It's not very common on costumes themselves, but it's very common for props or weapons that you might want to make. It's very common to use one of these in the middle of like a sword or a gun to make it stronger. This is what I used in my Clone Trooper Long Blaster, and there's also a special cutting tool that you can use to cut the pipes to different lengths so you may want to pick up one of those as well. Next up, we'll talk about the most important material in costume making, and that is the foam itself. There are many different kinds of foam out there, so I'm just going to start off with this one. This is known as craft foam, and it is usually thin and very bendable. They come in these little sheets, and they're almost always very cheap. Some of them have a sticky backside that you can peel off and place down, like already applied glue, but you may not want those. If your glue is better, just something to keep in mind. I would recommend only buying ones without the sticky back because the contact cement that I use is much stronger and better than the one that is already on the foam. One of the more important things to keep in mind when buying craft foam is the thickness of the foam. The smallest thickness that they have is two millimeters thick, which is really tiny. You cannot make a full costume out of just two millimeter foam because that is just too flexible and it won't hold its shape properly. A thicker craft foam that you can buy is about five or six millimeters thick and it's much more sturdy and rigid compared to the two millimeter foam. I would recommend picking up both kinds just so you can have some different levels of detail on your armor. The next kind of foam is known as the roll kind of foam, and this is basically just a giant floor mat that's been rolled up. This is the same kind of foam that I used to make my clone trooper costume that you all saw. It is about seven millimeters thick, and it does have this pattern on the back of it, which is different from the craft foam that we saw earlier. You'll notice that there is a lot more foam in this roll than there is with the small sheets of the craft foam, and that does show in the price. The large roll of foam is a lot more expensive just because you get so much more of it all at once. The last kind of foam that I have used is known as the puzzle piece kind, and this is the thickest kind of foam. So if you have an armor piece that is supposed to be very thick or very bulky, you'll probably want to use this kind of foam to make it. If we look at the different thicknesses of the foams more closely compared to one another, you can clearly see how different they are. So I would recommend looking at your intended costume design and then choosing the type of foam that you think best fits that armor armor piece. On a side note, another type of foam that you might be interested in is insulation foam. This is not at all something you can use to make a costume with. It is simply for insulation purposes to fill out blank spaces in your costume. For example, I used it in my clone trooper costume around the shin guards to sort of fill out the empty space where my foot was not touching against the EVA foam. You can look at that video if you want to see a reference. Another material that you can potentially use is cardboard. This is just a little shield I made a while back. Cardboard is not a material that I would recommend using personally because of the texture on the top and the sturdiness of it is not that great, but it could be used as sort of a template or maybe a support material inside one of your costumes. Another incredibly useful tool that I would recommend picking up is some Velcro. This is extremely important for attaching the armor pieces to your body or for attaching armor pieces to themselves. Although I will not deny that the connection of Velcro is not quite as strong as the connection of a buckle, which we will talk about later. 
Next up, we can look at some straps that you can use to attach it to your body. You can use a combination of elastic straps, which are stretchy and bendy, and also just like nylon straps, which are not stretchy, they're just solid, like rope almost. You can also use old belts if you want to. That's another option. You can find them pretty cheaply at the Goodwill or something like that if you have one around you. In order to attach the straps together, you will probably need something like a buckle. You can use Velcro, like I said before, but a buckle connection is usually more stronger. This is what I used to hold up the thigh guards in my clone costume. I would recommend picking up a few, but it's just an option. Next up, we can look at one of my favorite items, and these are magnets. Now, the ones that you can see here are a gray color, and they are just regular magnets. They are not as strong as the chrome-plated magnets, which are called neodymium magnets, and they are much stronger. I used the neodymium magnets in my clone trooper costume to attach my gun on my back because I needed a strong connection, and these gray ones here just aren't strong enough. But you can easily find the silver neodymium magnets online or even in a craft store. They're not hard to get, but the neodymium magnets are much stronger, as I said before, and therefore they are much more dangerous to work with. One of the biggest issues that I have with magnets is how strong they can be. I have had many magnets shatter when they collide with each other just because the magnetic pull between the two magnets is so strong that it will literally shatter the magnets when they collide against each other. So make sure that you don't let go of your magnet when you're working with them. Another little detail piece that you could add to your costume are these little D-rings. You can also use various types of gloves in your costume, depending on what color or what kind of glove you're going for. You can just buy one to match. I got these cheap ones at the craft store. As for clothes, you can use pretty much whatever is available. I was able to get this cheap black blank shirt at a craft store, but you're more than welcome to just use whatever is available for you. Lastly, I wanted to talk about the various types of paint available for you to use. We already looked at the Flexi Dip and the Plasti Dip, which are sealants that I looked at before, and they can also function as paint. Next to that, we have generic acrylic paint. This type of paint, of course, is the one that you're most familiar with, and it is probably the easiest kind of paint to work with. It's what I would recommend for beginners, but it does require a paintbrush, which can leave brush marks, so just keep that in mind. The last type of paint is spray paint, which is also pretty popular. You have to be kind of careful with spray paint as it can cause drips or runny spots on your paint job, which can ruin the look of a costume if you're not careful. This is where the masking tape comes in from earlier. I would recommend using that if you want different colors on your armor. So that's 99% of the materials and tools that I use to make costumes. There are, are obviously some minor materials or tools that I may use from time to time just for very specific circumstances, but these are the big ones that I recommend either picking up or considering buying. I want to say a quick thank you to my Patreons for supporting me. As you can probably imagine by all of the tools and materials that you have seen, the cost of all of this can be rather large if you're not careful. I will cover Cover the cost in another Q&A video since that seems to be a pretty common question. But that's all I had for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe if you want to see more, and good luck with your costumes!